The cost of cancer treatment can be high because of the people or multi multidisciplinary team that are involved in the management of cancer patients, such as the doctors, the nurses and other healthcare professionals which are highly trained and specialised in their field of study. The facilities and the research and technology as well as the discovery and testing of the innovative drugs for efficacy and safety in research come with great costs. So this process can take years and millions of dollars to complete. So everyone wants state-of-the-art treatment or cutting-edge technology for their cancer treatment. So your cure rate depends on many factors including your initial stage, your cancer subtype or biology and whether you could receive appropriate treatment according to your individual cancer characteristics. Certainly there are options and do talk to your doctor about this because your cure rate will depend so much on your cancer type, your cancer stage, what are the treatments that are available to you and the team of uh, healthcare professionals that you go to. It is normal to be afraid of side effects when you start chemo because you may have heard stories from other people who have had cancers about their experiences before you. You may also saw movies or read about how difficult treatment can be. But it's important to remember that cancer treatment is different for everyone and there are many, many factors involved. And yes, there are some side effects such as nausea, vomiting, feeling tired or having mouth sores or fever. But your healthcare team has ways, has more than one ways to prevent and relieve these side effects uh, from occurring during your cancer treatment. We have more treatment now to address all these um, issues that you may find when you uh, are faced with the cancer treatment and the side effects. And do remember and create awareness that chemotherapy doesn't kill but heals. And the increased cure rate and cancer survival, otherwise we won't still be here caring for all of you. The total time taken for each treatment will differ from patient to patient. Surgery and radiotherapy have fixed duration. For example, radiotherapy is usually around is usually given around three to five weeks. The length of chemotherapy treatment is determined by a variety of factors. This include the type of cancer, the extent of the cancer, and the type of drugs that are given, as well as what are the expected toxicities and the amount of time necessary to recover from these toxicities. In general, chemotherapy treatment is given in cycles. This cycling allows the cancer cells to be attacked at their most vulnerable times and allow the body's normal cells time to recover from the damage. Many chemotherapy treatment schedules have been determined through clinical trials. They have compared the chemotherapy schedules and determined which had the most benefit and which was the most well tolerated. Targeted therapies like pertuzumab, trastuzumab or immunotherapy are generally given for a year, while hormone therapy can be given up to 5 to 10 years. In advanced stage breast cancer, the treatment is more variable and can be continuous for as long as the patient is benefiting from the treatment and not suffering from any untoward side effects. The decision is tailored to each individual by case-per-case -case basis and what the cancer trajectory will be like for them. So discuss with your doctor about this. Radiotherapy uses uh, high energy x-rays to destroy or kill cancer cells. So it is given to destroy these cells that may have been left in the breast and the surrounding area after surgery has taken place. So rapidly growing cells such as cancer cells are more susceptible to the effects of radiation therapy compared to normal cells. So x-rays or particles are actually painless and invisible, you can't see them. You're not radioactive after treatment, so it is safe to be around other people, including children and pregnant women. So you need not worry about harming others when you receive radiation therapy. This is a common uh, question that we get in clinic. And actually, breast cancer treatment itself, such as uh, radiotherapy, hormonal therapy, or chemotherapy, can cause menopausal symptoms such as hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, a low sex drive, mood changes, joint pain, and even changes to skin and hair. And some women find these symptoms manageable, but many find that they are you know, difficult to cope and can affect their quality of life. 
So in premenopausal women, some treatments that cause early menopause leads to symptoms that we have described earlier. So this treatment will not cause an early menopause, but just cause the symptoms that, as, that are associated with menopause. Some hormone replacement therapy can be given to help with the symptoms of uh, menopause, but it's not usually recommended for women with breast cancer. Therefore, if you are taking hormone replacement therapy when you are diagnosed with breast cancer, you will probably be advised to stop these therapies. Talk to your treatment team for advice about how best to do this because once you stop the HRT, your menopausal symptoms may return. So this can be severe and have a significant impact on your quality of life. Your decisions about how to try to manage them may depend on how severe your symptoms are and the likely side effects of any of the treatment that you're having. So start your discussion with your team of healthcare professionals as early as possible. If there are a specialist menopause clinic in your lo local area where you can get further advice and information about coping with menopausal symptoms, please do so and contact and get a referral to see them. Breast cancer and its treatment can cause changes to your body and the way you look. For example, after surgery, you'll be left with a scar. You may be even be left with no breasts or a smaller breast. So your confidence and self-esteem may be affected and you may feel unfeminine or unattractive. So ideally, patients are treated by a team. So talk to your healthcare team about your options and what are your wishes. In terms of breast surgery, since the past two decades, we learned from studies that women suffering from early stages of breast cancer do not need to have their whole breast removed to survive. Women now have the option of breast conserving surgery, means that you remove the tumour and reserving the breast. This allows them to maintain their normal breasts and appearing cosmetically and feeling very much like their original breasts. There have been a lot of advances in both breast surgical options and reconstructive options for breast cancer. For example, we can make the tumour smaller and more amenable to breast reservation type of surgery, so we are doing less and less mastectomy now. Some people continue to work, sometimes reduce hours, and others give up work temporarily or permanently. Returning to work is complex, but you are not alone in feelings of this you know, worry or anxiety about work. Whether you are able to go back to work while going through breast cancer treatment will depend on the type of breast cancer that you have and whether it has spread. The treatment that you're having and any long-term side effects and of course your financial status and needs also determine whether you should return to work or not. Our advice to you is to take adequate time before deciding what you wish to do after being confronted with this diagnosis. Plan ahead about how you would feel when returning to work by keeping in touch with work while you are going through treatment so you feel equally informed and ready for your return. Always be kind to yourself and implement self-care in and outside of work.